One of the most important, persistent and controversial issues to emerge has been the militarization, or as some are now calling it, the weaponization of outer space. Fine. Since this conference is to... It would be inappropriate because he said the conference has been called to discuss okay. the peace. Okay, five from now, five, four. We also invited a representative of the Soviet delegation to the Unispace Conference here in Vienna to discuss the question of the militarization and the weaponization of space. He declined because he said it would be inappropriate since the purpose of this conference is to discuss only the peaceful uses of space. Kevin Sanders, CNN, in Vienna. Uh, Dr. Sagan, you used a phrase last night here at the uh, Unispace Conference when you said that the, um, the space endeavor was now at uh, what I believe you called a branch point. Um, what do you see the different directions involved and what do you see the implications of following in one or other of these directions? Well, uh, the same technology that uh, can take us to the planets and the stars, can also uh, launch uh, nuclear warheads on ballistic trajectories to uh, destroy us. Um, we, we have in the same technology the means of uh, exploring our surroundings in space and extending the human presence uh, uh, beyond the Earth and uh, the capacity for self-destruction. It's, uh, it's remarkable that something so positive and something so negative can flow out of precisely the same technology, the technology of rockets, the technology of, uh, of nuclear energy, the technology of, uh, of radio communications. Uh, I see in present trends a, a tendency towards the militarization of space, which uh, I believe uh, is counterproductive and dangerous. Um, I certainly think that that, uh, for example, military reconnaissance satellites in Earth orbit are desirable, they're stabilizing, they make it uh, more difficult for one nation to uh, surprise uh, another. Uh, on the other hand, the, the idea of, uh, of weapons, uh, nuclear or not, uh, in Earth orbit or in space, uh, I think is an extremely dangerous trend. And uh, I know that, uh, that most of the delegations at this meeting uh, share my my concern about the militarization of space, and I hope it's something that uh, there will be an agreement between the, the major powers to prevent. A couple of suggestions that have been floating around here. Uh, one is the so-called French initiative to put up a, an Earth observation satellite under United Nations auspices to monitor disarmament agreements uh, on Earth and in space. Uh, another similar suggestion has been for such an observation satellite uh, to be developed in cooperation between the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, how effective do you think such a technology might be for peacekeeping? Well, there's no question that, uh, that existing military reconnaissance uh, satellites have been very effective. Um, and uh, these are, however, American satellites which are working for American interests and Soviet satellites that are working for Soviet interests. I can't imagine that the two nations would abandon their uh, military reconnaissance satellites, but uh, I certainly think it might be uh, useful for uh, international organizations to uh, have an independent means of uh, verification of arms control agreements. What this would mean is that uh, if country A claims country B is cheating, perhaps there are those in country A who have a vested interest in claiming that country B is cheating. An independent uh, international organization with its own data uh, might be a very useful thing to have on the scene uh, so that uh, we uh, can be sure that A is not exaggerating what its classified reconnaissance data is saying. How urgent do you think it is that some sort of decision be made regarding uh, the, uh, the demilitarization of space? Well, these, these developments have a kind of technological momentum uh, and inertia. Once get, they get going, they, uh, 
they establish uh, large constituencies of uh, people whose careers depend upon the success of the enterprise, uh, uh, large numbers of people whose salary is uh, dependent on the success of the enterprise. And uh, that makes it very hard, once uh, the thing has gotten going, to turn it off. So if it is uh, undesirable to uh, militarize space, it's essential that uh, this decision be made early. If there's a delay of some years, it may be impossible to uh, slow down or stop. There are many examples in the nuclear arms race where uh, steps have been taken which clearly destabilize both the United States and the Soviet Union, and yet they happened because of a kind of technological inertia. I'm very concerned that the same thing will happen uh, in the militarization of space. Well, how do you, do you see the, um, how do you see this, this being stopped? Um, how do you see the political procedures evolving? Do you, do you see the need to set up a separate international body? Do you think it can be done through some cooperative effort, effort between the superpowers, or what? I think the only practical way that uh, this could be accomplished is by uh, direct negotiation between the United States and the Soviet Union. I think that international organizations, especially the United Nations, can uh, play an important role in indicating what the uh, wishes of the vast majority of nations might be, assuming that there is some agreement as to what, uh, what the uh, consensus is. But uh, I think only a uh, discussion at a uh, level of perfect parity between uh, the United States and the Soviet Union could accomplish the sort of demilitarization we're talking about. Now, of course, we have to remember there are other nations that uh, are able to, to uh, launch significant payloads into Earth orbit. And, uh, of course, an agreement between the United States and the Soviet Union would not be uh, binding on uh, France, let's say, or uh, Japan, or People's China. And uh, I would imagine that in the long term there have to be a, a uh, set of multilateral negotiations, but the key is clearly for the United States and the Soviet Union to come to an agreement on this issue. And I believe it is clearly in the mutual interest of both nations to avoid the militarization of space. Again, I'd like to stress that I'm not talking about uh, uh, reconnaissance satellites. They are very good things to, uh, to have. Uh, what I'm talking about is weapons in orbit. That's a very bad thing to have. It's destabilizing. It's dangerous to the welfare of both nations. And uh, I think uh, that it is urgent that uh, work be done immediately to stop this trend. In terms of the planetary research, the area in which you've been perhaps most closely associated, there has been some concern expressed here at this conference that, uh, for example, the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the JPL in Pasadena, may be able to survive only if it has the support of the military. Is this something that you think is, uh, do you think this may be happening, and is it a source of concern to you? Uh, yes and yes. Um, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is run by the California Institute of Technology for NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, is uh, one of the premier engineering organizations of uh, its kind on the planet Earth. It's uh, an extraordinary place, and uh, it has been responsible for uh, exploratory ventures from uh, Mercury to uh, well beyond Saturn, a uh, historical endeavor that will be remembered in the history books a thousand years from now. Now, because of the policies of this administration and the two preceding administrations, uh, the uh, number of uh, new missions that JPL has to, uh, to work with have been steadily cut down so that today there is just one planetary mission for the entire decade of the 1980s that uh, will be launched by the United States, the so-called Galileo mission. Uh, this trend is very dangerous because it dissipates uh, unique engineering teams, uh, and you can't reassemble them at a later time. Now, part of the slack has been taken up by uh, enhanced military contracts by uh, JPL. And uh, this does tend on some level to uh, keep the engineering teams together, but my impression is that, uh, at least for many of them, this is not the sort of work that, uh, that they had in mind in coming to JPL. It's not the kind of work of tremendous excitement at the cutting edge of human exploration. Uh, and there is some degree of uh, 
of concern among uh, scientists and engineers, both those in JPL and, and knowledgeable people outside, uh, that uh, the net result of this trend is to dismantle the American effort at uh, exploration of the solar system and to convert it towards uh, military technology. And uh, that, some of us think, uh, can also be a dangerous trend. On the other hand, uh, the new director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, former Air Force Chief of Staff Lou Allen, so also a nuclear physicist, has uh, stated publicly that uh, his function is not to militarize JPL, but uh, to uh, continue its glorious history of uh, civilian exploration. And uh, I would think that a military man in that uh, position could be more effective in maintaining the civilian character of JPL than a civilian man in that position. So I'm hopeful that, uh, that the remarkable uh, accomplishments of JPL will continue. Well, finally, can I ask you, uh, how effective do you think gatherings like this meeting here in uh, Vienna, the Unispace Conference, is? I mean, is, is it a danger that everybody will go away feeling that uh, something useful has been accomplished when, in fact, uh, it's just a matter of everybody talking with everybody else and uh, having no broader resonance? Or do you, do you think that uh, conferences like this can be effective in, in, uh, in making the issues known and, in fact, uh, finally leading to some sort of decision that will be helpful in directing the efforts in space toward peaceful uses? Well, I think uh, it's certainly useful for uh, nations to understand what uh, opinions other nations have. And uh, I suspect it is only rarely that uh, the United States, uh, let's say, discovers what uh, the opinion of Burundi is on uh, this or that space uh, activity, and uh, maybe even vice versa. Uh, I think the, uh, the greatest value of such meetings is not in the sessions, but outside the sessions. Uh, when small numbers of delegates uh, get together, express uh, kind of with their hair down uh, what their opinions are, what their concerns are. There's a great deal of concern uh, by uh, small nations about uh, the technological dominance of large nations. And uh, it seems to me that's uh, a concern that large nations ought to certainly be aware of. There's also uh, a lot of educational efforts, for example, on the value of, uh, of scientific exploration of space, not just the obvious practical advantages of communication satellites or weather satellites or uh, Earth resources satellites, but uh, the value for all people all over the planet of uh, scientific exploration. And I think there's been a great deal of, uh, of that kind of discussion happening. So in general, I think meetings like this are, uh, are useful, but uh, as I say, more uh, outside the meeting rooms than inside. Dr. Sagan, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you.